Okay, in this video I just wanted to give kind of a cool example. I was going over some genetics information the other day and I found this example and I decided that I thought I'd like to talk about it in the um, in a video just, just to kind of give an idea of what the alpha heli where alpha helixes are found and why they're important. So what I have here is structural motifs of DNA binding proteins. So these are DNA binding proteins and this is one of the structural motifs. It's called the basic region leucine zipper motif. So it's probably the third major class of sequence dependent DNA binding protein. Um, there's other ones as well that you can look into, um, namely a zinc finger and a helix turn helix are the other two common ones. So a lot of transcription factors are known to contain this motif. So one of the common transcription factors is actually what's known as CR EB, and what that stands for is cyclic AMP response element binding protein. So it's cyclic AMP response element binding protein. So that actually contains this um, motif, this basic region leucine zipper. Um, and what's important about it, and there's a little picture of it over here kind of showing how this um, leucine zipper might interact with the DNA double helix here and also how the how the two different groups would interact with each other and that's really what's important here because the first half consists of um, consists of a basic region so I want to write that down so it consists of a basic region so there's two regions is what I want to say there's two regions there's a basic region which has which has a which is rich I should say rich in lysine and arginine residues. So there's a basic region that's rich in lysine and arginine residues. Um, we know from our uh, studies that at physiological pH lysine and arginine both have uh, positive charges. And you might say, well why does it matter that they're positively charged? Well that's important because in order for this part of the protein here, so these, these are the basic regions over here that are interacting with the DNA, and why are they interacting with the DNA? That's the point I'm getting at here. That's because DNA is negative is negatively charged. So DNA is negatively charged. So it has negative charge. I remember it has these nucleotides with phosphate groups on them and these phosphates that carry a negative charge. And that's how you form these, this basic region here forms really strong electrostatic interactions then with the DNA. So this basic region is forming these really strong interactions with the DNA because one's positively charged, these loose, this lysine here, so it says that NH3, the positive charge on it, and this arginine over here also has the NH2 with the positive charge and the double bond. So those are positively interacting with the DNA. Now, there's another part to this. There's a second region. So there's a second region. So there's a second region that contains a series of leucines. So a series of leucines. So it contains a series of leucine residues, L, E, U. And what you'll know, what I said before about the alpha helix was that there is it has basically two different domains. It has a hydrophilic domain and a hydrophobic domain. So it has a hydrophilic face and a hydrophobic face essentially. And what's interesting about the leucine, this leucine zipper motif, is that these leucines all appear on the same side of the alpha helix. So if I had an alpha helix here all these leucines are on the same face over here on the alpha helix. And why is that interesting? Well it's interesting because this actually forms this zipper part. So I don't know how well you can see this here but there's these interactions going on in between these two helixes. And those interactions are actually hydrophobic interactions between two leucine residues. So essentially you have this CH2 um, CH, CH3, CH3, and you have two of these interacting with each other. 
So if I were to say this is LEU, and I were to say the same thing over here, so CH3, CH3, CH. That's essentially what the interaction looks like um, inside or between, rather, between these two helixes. So that's kind of why it's interesting. And that occurs every seven residues. So basically every seven residues, you have a leucine. And that's what allows those leucines all to wind up on the same side of the helix and to be able to interact with each other. And it takes 3.6 amino acids to make a turn in an alpha helix. So, you know, it makes sense that every seven is going to be the uh, magic number for getting all these leucines on the same side. So I just thought I'd kind of point that out. I thought this kind of was cool because it, it shows a number of different things. It shows um, a, a place where this alpha helix is actually useful and where it's, where it's um, interacting with DNA in this case. It's also showing that, you know, the alpha helix has these two different, you know, sort of com components to it. This basic region here in this case and this um, leucine region. So it has this sort of hydrophobic, hydrophilic type of um, arrangement, which is common in alpha, the most alpha helixes. So I just thought I'd talk a little bit about this and hopefully you find it interesting. Thanks.